Let's bring in Michael Kroger, Sky News contributor. Michael, thank you for joining us. What do you Pleasure. make of the polls at this point in the election? Well, look, this is an even money bet. It's a 50-50 bet right as we speak. It depends on Harris. It depends on how her interview goes on CNN in the next few days. It depends on whether she does other interviews. It's to whether people work out that she's not all that good. You know, Trump is a defined character. Everyone knows exactly who he is, what he stands for and what he's mm. like, for good or bad. They didn't know anything about her as vice president. Um, Americans are just waking up to Kamala Harris. Don't forget... Americans didn't even know that Biden had dementia until the CNN, until the, until the presidents were debating against Trump. So unless you're watching very, this program, unless you're watching this program, um, Fox News in America or um, GB News in England, you had no idea this bloke had dementia, which just shows you how uninformed so many people are in America. Yeah. Most people know nothing about Harris. Um, when she's been asked about, you know, her achievements, people have had no idea. They know nothing about her. And all they've seen over the last month, Gab, is this this laughing, friendly, nice woman who the you know hard left media speak well of. That's all I know about her. And until such time as she's been subject to a number of interviews where people realise, hang on, this is pretty much an empty suit. Uh, this this person can't be president of the United States of America. She's going to continue to do well in the polls because um, mm -hmm. you know it looks good, sounds good, but isn't good. So well, that CNN debate is critical. Absolutely. Well, we might see that change because she is going to give her first interview after 40 days of being the nominee tomorrow. How do you think she'll go? Well, look, um, <laughs> look what she's doing. She's doing an interview with the least watched cable news network in America. As we know, Fox have got, what, two, three million viewers. Uh, MSNBC have got a bit over a million. CNN have got 600,000. So it's got the lowest ratings um, she's doing a pre-recorded interview, pre-recorded, mm. which allows them to edit it, and she's taking on the vice president. You couldn't have a bigger security blanket than all of those three things put together. So how will she go? Um, he, he will interrupt her. He'll take up, you know, a third or half of the time. They are trying to protect her with a friendly audience, a pre-record, and him on the stage as well. No, what she needs is an interview with a serious journalist who's going to ask her the hard questions about yeah. her record, about her policies, etc. So even though uh, under under extreme pressure, the Harris campaign have buckled and said, of course, we have to give an interview. Imagine in Australia or England, if if if, if the Prime Ministerial candidates weren't giving interviews on a daily or every second day. I mean, in Australia uh, and in other Western countries, this wouldn't be tolerated. People no. would laugh at the thought that you can hide someone for 40 days running from the most powerful office in the world. So... If she does more and more interviews, then her vote will continue to de will decline, right? The gloss will come off, she will decline and Trump will win. So they've been hiding her. Everyone, everyone on the inside knows they've been hiding her and they've yeah. done an excellent job so far. Well, speaking of hiding people, President Joe Biden's missing. He's been spotted tanning at the beach. Look, he's almost at the end of his presidency. Why is he taking time off now? <laughs> Well, of course, he probably doesn't have much to do. Um, he hasn't been running America for these last three and a half years. We know that. I mean, sad though it is, he's in mental decline, as everybody knows, and uh, he's just having a bit of a holiday. But um, basically, his staff have been running the country for three and a half years. Who knows who they are? But they've been running the joint for three and a half years. Yeah. She's clearly not doing any work. She's running for president. So uh, America's just sort of on autopilot at the minute for the next... Uh, for the next six months until this presidential election is resolved, Gab. No, it's laughable, but then it's 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 not funny because it's no, quite dangerous. Sad. Absolutely. Sad. And look, it's sadly this hasn't taken very long to get going again. What we're seeing at elite American colleges, once again, they are becoming places for anti-Semitic messages to be promoted. Anti-Israel activists used red spray paint to deface a building at Cornell University in New York City, uh, in New York, I should say, while massive protests were held on the first day of class. This is just the start of the college year. Are you concerned that we might see an escalation like we saw these protests turn quite violent just a few months ago? Yeah, there probably is. There are going to be more demonstrations, but they this one seemed to be much smaller, and I think you'll find at the other colleges they're smaller because, look, let's...
racists. These are left-wing racists. They're the worst type of people who support the oldest hatred in the world, the hatred of Jewish people. We can call it anti-Semitism, and they say they're pro-Palestinian, they're anti-Netanyahu. No, these people hate Jews, right? They are racists. And that's what their parents and friends of others have worked out. As they've gone around over the last few months and people have said, why are you involved in this Jewish hating demonstrations? Some of these young people have started to realise this is not just not such a good thing to be associated with. Um, we're being accused of being Hamas supporters. We're being accused of being anti-Semitic. They don't know any Palestinians. This is just the hard extreme left venting their anger at Western culture, Western society, and because Israel part of the Western alliance, they attack Israel, right? None of these people... Where, where are they supporting the Ukraine? Where are they saying that the Ukraine will be free? None of them. Not one of them, right? This is just Jewish hatred, anti-Western hatred. And as I said, the demonstration will be smaller because so many of these young people are now realising this is not a cause they should be supporting. They are just expressions of hatred of Jews, you know, uh, camouflaged in this, oh, we're for Palestinian rights. Well, no, they're not. They just hate Jews. They can't explain what type of government there would be. They call for the destruction of Israel and the killing of Jews by yelling that from, Palis from, from the river to the sea, which is just a disgusting phrase. Uh, no, these people are doing themselves a lot of damage and the stain on their racism and Jewish hatred will live with them forever, Gab. Let's look at the conflict in the Middle East. Israeli forces rescued a 52-year-old hostage from the tunnels in Gaza. Kaid Fran Al-Qadi landed back in Israel and his family have uh, expressed their gratitude. It's pretty amazing seeing that footage and it certainly gives us some hope and some reason to celebrate, but it's also an important reminder that we need all the hostages back. Absolutely. There's still 106 there and uh, you've been to Israel, as I have uh, this year, to, to see the trauma and anguish that's, that, these, yeah. that these families are going through. What an extraordinary rescue. One man was just on his own that the, the Israelis found. Uh, just fantastic news, but there's still 106 to go. I mean, why... Why aren't these demonstrators at Cornell, by the way, yelling, you know, free the hostages? Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, what we've seen in the Middle East is Hamas and in Gaza. Hamas use innocent Palestinians as human shields. That's all they are. They're just fodder. They're just fodder. That's why they hide in people's homes. They hide in hospitals and schools and under them. And uh, the Palestinians who've been killed uh, are just... Uh, this is Hamas's fault and nobody else's fault. Uh, but wonderful to see this person... Um, Wonderful to see this person, um, you know, rescued after all these after all these months, Gab. Just your thoughts on how this is all Hamas's fault. Is that uh, your response to to the news today that at least ten Palestinians were killed in a major operation by Israeli forces in the north of the West Bank? Uh, Israeli security forces said that they'd begun a counterterrorism operation. What, what's your response? Well, what's clear now from all the international press is that Iran are funneling weapons through um, intermediary countries, uh, Iraq and Syria, through to um, these Palestinian activists uh, on the West Bank. And uh, they're arming them as much as they can to create more strife for Israel. And as always, Israel has to defend itself against Palestinian terrorism. And that's exactly what they're doing, whether it's coming from Hezbollah, whether it's coming from Hamas, from Hamas, um, from Islamic Jihad, uh, from elements of Fatah in the West Bank, Israel's got to defend itself. And as usual, innocent Palestinians get killed because we see these militants hiding out in people's homes. That's what these people do. Uh, you know, Yaya Sinwa famously said not so long ago, was reported as saying, well, you know, these, uh, these innocent Palestinians get killed. That's just, you know, part of the game we play. You know, that's if they get killed, it's, it's helpful to Hamas because it creates outrage in the West and uh, outrage amongst these, you know, ignorant young students at uh, Cornell and other universities. So, of course, Israel has to defend itself when, when the Janine, you know, camp is not that far from Tel Aviv. I mean, it's a very small country. And, of course, Israel has to defend itself. It has no choice. Mm. And finally, the Israeli military launched what it called a preemptive strike against Hezbollah in Lebanon just a few days ago as the Iran-backed militant group said it carried out its own attacks in response to the killing of a top commander. How much longer can Hezbollah fight back while so many of its leaders have been killed? 
Well, for quite a long time, it has a huge amount of weaponry. And uh, when one leader gets killed, someone else comes along, which is why, as we all know, you'll never wipe out Hamas. And Netanyahu knows that. But uh, what he's trying to say to the Israeli population is, we'll kill as many of these terrorists as we can. But he knows, like we all know, that they'll never be extinguished. Like Nazis have never been extinguished. Um, there are still Nazis around the world, as we know. So um, what Israel wants is to get a peaceful resolution of the situation with Hezbollah in Lebanon, um, but they have a huge number of rockets. They have a massive armory. But of course, they've got to be careful because the, the Lebanese population don't particularly like Hezbollah, who are in the south of the country, just north mm. of the Israeli border. So the, the Le Lebanese population are tiring of Hezbollah. Um, they're there by courtesy of the you know, Syria, of their Lebanese government, but they're, they're getting sick of Hezbollah. I mean, why, why does the average Lebanese person want to have these terrorists, uh, you know, south of, of the Latani River. They don't want them there, uh, but they're still there, supported by Iran. So they'll go on as long as they're armed by Iran and as long as the Lebanese population will tolerate them. And uh, they must be straining out, 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 you know, outstaying their welcome because uh, they're not bringing any joy to Lebanon, which is a country now in, with a severe economic crisis. Michael Krogar, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, Gab.